Testing, testing. Oh, great. Okay, Your only for good. Your password is is. Okay, I got it. <coughs> Help, it's a Mac. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Asaf Baltov. I work for the Wikimedia Foundation, and I'm here to talk very briefly about a topic that deserves more time, the Wikimedia Foundation's new <coughs> Global South <coughs> strategy. If you don't like the term Global South, that makes all of us, okay? So yes, we won't talk about that. Um, we'll briefly remind everyone of the need, the challenge, what has been done so far, what has been learned from what has been done, and so now what? So this is the part that doesn't really need saying. I think most of the people in this room are aware of the need to involve more people from the Global South and to reach more people in the Global South. Uh, I'll nevertheless spell out a few points. Contributing to Wikipedia is a meaningful, empowering uh, experience. Um, and it's as important as participating in standard academic discourse, which is also underrepresented in the Global South. Um, when we have so few editors from the Global South, we are missing important voices, we're missing contexts, we're missing knowledge maps, hierarchies, alternative narratives, silenced narratives uh, that people may not be deliberately silencing, just unaware of because of past silencing. Um, and the, the, this paucity this small number of, of Global South editors necessarily introduces a systemic bias to our projects, whether we like it or not. Uh, Jimmy also said this in his keynote, participating in the creation and curation of knowledge should be a human right. It should be part of everyone's ability to participate. Uh, finally, I'll mention a page. If you don't know that page, I recommend visiting it a policy slash essay page on Wikipedia, on the English Wikipedia, called There Is a Deadline. Things are disappearing, cultural artifacts are rotting away in closed archives, uh, natural disasters damage libraries and archives, not only in the Global South, as we know, and if we don't document, curate, distill information, capture images from those resources today, we may not have them tomorrow or ever. So, <clears throat> the challenge we face in numbers, the number of active editors from the Global South is about 15,000 editors out of a total of about 75,000 editors. I will remind you, an active editor in our standard vocabulary means a person who makes at least five edits a month, more or less at least once a week. Uh, and uh, that makes 20%, about 20% of the global editorship comes from the Global South. Um, that number, unfortunately, has been robust. It has not, that proportion has not changed in more than a year. Uh, the number of edits originating in the Global South is also about 20%. The percent of views of Wikimedia content from the Global South is about 25%. That may sound pretty good, but then you remind yourself that 81% of the global population is in the Global South. So proportionally, a very tiny fraction of the page views uh, reaches the majority of the population. Um, the total population we reach around the world is 500 million different people a month. You've heard this statistic before. Again, I'll remind you the planet has about 7.1 billion people. So, a rather sobering thought, we are reaching, our free knowledge is reaching only 7%. We're 7% there on our, on our vision. 
So that's definitely a challenge. Um, more numbers. Of the total amount of grants we gave, uh, in dollars, only 8.5% went to the Global South. So a very small fraction of the amount of money we gave away went to the Global South. The average grant size was about $13,000. I will quickly point out the obvious. This is not because we don't want to give more money to the Global South. It is because it is hard to find uh, good opportunities to, to fund in the Global South and because those opportunities are generally more limited than opportunities in the Global North. Um, so overall in the last fiscal year we gave about five, five and a half million dollars in grants to 90 different grantees. About half a million dollars were given in the Global South overall. Um, and of the affiliate organizations, that is chapters, thematic groups, user groups, we made 29 grants to 20 different affiliates, and that was a total of $5 million. All right, these numbers are a little boring, but they do illustrate the disparity in funding. Uh, since we have very, very little time, please let me talk through uh, what I have to say, and I promise I will take questions uh, into the break, during the break, we have lunch, so I will hear everyone, absolutely anyone who wants to say anything. Um, all right. So some of the factors that make it so in the Global South, obviously, again, I don't need to go into details here. Access to the network, very low penetration in some parts of the Global South, 13% in India, 15% in Indonesia, 50% in Brazil. Um, access to materials, including secondary literature, very required for contributing to Wikipedia according to Wikipedia policies, uh, but also um, just the physical materials needed to, to work. Uh, languages in the Global South are a fraught issue. There are tensions and disparities between indigenous languages and colonial languages. There are differences in what is the language of education versus what is the mother tongue versus where, uh, in what language are resources available, not just academic resources, but government data, for example. Um, and there is the issue of lost causes of Wikipedias in languages that I consider a lost cause. It's a, admittedly a debatable issue. Uh, where the line crosses, I would contend uh, any reasonable person would agree that a language with 2,000 or 5,000 speakers in the world will never have a viable Wikipedia as a reference source, but only as a preservationist project. Uh, but, you know, even if you agree with that, what about a language that has 500,000 speakers or 2 million speakers? And what about if only 10% of them are literate, et cetera, et cetera? So um, there is the problem, I consider it a problem, in our movement of a conflation between the preservationist uh, mission, which is a noble and worthwhile mission, and our mission, which is creating and sharing free knowledge. Uh, some of you have heard me talk about this before. Uh, Wikipedia is a middle-class hobby. Again, a debatable assertion, but I stand behind it. It is essentially a middle-class hobby for people with spare time and some spare money. Uh, yes, there are non-middle class contributors to Wikipedia. It is wonderful. We want to have as many of them as possible. Nevertheless, broadly, Wikipedia is a middle class hobby. Um, there are questions of culture. Um, in some cultures, volunteerism is, is not as popular as in others, or the concept of a charity is more narrowly construed as giving food to the poor, that kind of thing, healthcare, but not free knowledge, free licenses. That just doesn't really fit with people's concept of a charity. And finally, of course, there are political, legal, financial limitations on, how do we see the entire, I don't know, I give up. Um, limitations on expression, on assembly, on communication, on foreign currency, we have run into some significant difficulties just getting money to some of our 
uh, volunteers in the Global South. Uh, okay, so what has been done about all this? I'll, I'm, this is a very partial list and I don't have time to describe all of these activities, but I will mention them. I'll start with something that's often overlooked, technology. We have made a lot of progress technologically for uh, improving the possibility of participation and reach in the Global South with the, uh, to my mind, pretty amazing efforts of the language engineering team and volunteers uh, of the foundation. Uh, we are, I, I have no doubt, we are the organization that takes language the most seriously on the planet in terms of supporting it technologically. Um, some of you know our language engineers who are complete zealots and fanatical about getting it absolutely right down to the last diacritical mark and grammatical uh, weirdness of uh, whatever language it is. We want Wikipedia to work perfectly in all languages. Um, there is, of course, the work done by chapters in the Global South, also in the Global North, work done by Global North chapters in the Global South, that is. There was the work by the catalyst teams of the Wikimedia Foundation in India and Brazil. Uh, there was the work by the Lettera 27 Foundation from Italy and the Wiki Africa project with the um, Africa Center. There was the work done by the Open Society Foundation, mostly in Central Asia, uh, but also elsewhere. Uh, there were offline deployments, deployments of Wikipedia offline in Africa, in South America. Uh, su superb impact on the people receiving this knowledge. Imagine if you have an offline copy of Wikipedia, you don't have access to the internet. This is a, a, a significant increase of your horizons, of your availability of general reference information. Um, and there have been some very inspiring successes there. We have had the Wikipedia Zero efforts, of course, giving, again, free access free of charge to millions of people, ten, tens of millions, hundreds of millions by now, uh, of people around, potentially, potentially hundreds of millions. It's, it's not that everyone also uses it, but uh, giving a lot of access um, to people who have not had access to Wikipedia before or were prohibited uh, found the prices prohibitive uh, to access it on their phones. There have been content injection projects, some of you are aware of those, uh, sort of organized efforts by companies such as Google, by governments, to feed a mass of content onto Wikipedia in various languages. And there have been competitions, um, including the Wikipedia Challenge, which was run as a partnership between the foundation and Google. Okay, so all of that has been done and more in the Global South. What has been learned? The one important lesson I want to share is that the sine qua non, the, the thing you cannot do without of most programs is a core of self-motivating active editors. A core of self-motivating active editors. That is, active editors, people who edit at least five times a month, self-motivating, people who do this anyway, not as part of a competition, not because they are in touch with someone from the foundation, uh, just because they like it, they want to cultivate the wiki, they're passionate about the mission, and they just do it, they just edit. So that core can be a handful, five, six, seven people. I think there is a, a significant, a qualitative difference between countries and regions that have such a handful and ones that do not. The, the absolute prerequisite for most programs that we think of, partnerships, GLAM, outreach, education programs, etc., absolutely depends on the existence of this core. You can't make good on the, on the commitments you make as part of those partnerships if you don't have at least that little core of editors to receive the donated content, to write the articles around the theme of the partnership, uh, and even to, to liaise, to, to connect with the international community, because certainly the international community can help 
with commons, content donations, with categorization, with bots, with everything, but you still need that core, that local core, to make this happen. I have had to insist on this point in some of my conversations about possible Global South initiatives, where I insisted that without this core, there is no point in funding certain opportunities. The question of how to, how to get to an active core of self-motivating editors where that core does not yet exist is a million dollar question and I'm very happy to discuss it. I don't think we have found a solution yet. I don't think we really know how to go to a place where there are no active editors and through a process and investment, no matter how expensive or long, we just don't know what that process would look like that could possibly create that core. Uh, the one ray of hope Oh, thank you. We have received some time. I don't know who to thank for this, but... Okay, so... Um, I think we don't know how to do that. I think the one ray of hope I am sort of faintly detecting is the uh, education program. The partnership, partnering with universities could potentially uh, seed an active editor community. However, there is a chicken and egg problem in that it's very hard to deliver an education program in a university when there are no existing act, local active editors to, to receive the newbies, to greet them, to tutor them. Um, this is somewhat mitigatable in languages that are uh, regional, so there are people from other countries on the same wiki who can help, more difficult where, there, where the language is not shared. But this is a very important learning that, that I would like all of us to, to ponder. I think it, it makes or breaks certain ideas, certain programs. Some of the other learnings that I've not given their own slide is single session general audience outreach has negligible impact, not only in the global south. I think this is something many of us have come to learn. It feels great. People come out and say, thank you, this was very fascinating, I would like to contribute. Nothing much happens, broadly. I'm, I'm sure there are may, there's maybe one or two countries where, for whatever reason, this, this is more or less effective. Most of the reports I'm seeing, most of the statistics I'm seeing, suggest that a general audience, given a two-hour lecture plus tutorial, or even a half-day tutorial just won't really be retained as an active editor. Other models of whole courses, or of multiple meetings, of weekly or monthly working groups certainly do succeed in retaining people, and we've heard some successes uh, like that um, earlier in the conference. Another learning is that employees operate, foundation employees operating on the ground, so-called, uh, is, is too complicated an arrangement and not effective enough. This is the, the so-called catalyst programs that we have um, wound down and are converting them to grant partnerships, about which I will say a little more in just a minute. Um, another learning I would like to offer you is that sustained attention to local communities yields actionable plans. So if you really pay attention and engage in the local language with a community to really understand the, the, the lay of the land, the, the social structure of that community, the needs, the wants, the perceptions of that community which may have very different ideas about what is success and about what is desirable, if you do pay that attention in a sustained manner, that is over long months, you can create actionable plans that are, that are acceptable to both the community and the foundation, or both the community and the chapter. This is something I would recommend all chapters, all grantees to think about. You need to develop your plans with the community, not just to inform the community, but to really get them to engage. And this is harder than it sounds. It's not just about putting stuff up on Meta and announcing on a mailing list. It's really getting people to read long blocks of text, to share comments, to argue their positions, etc. Another learning is that Wikipedia Zero is effective. Good news. It's a good return on investment. 
ooh, business term. Um, it's just a good return on investment, literally, because if you compare the amount of time and money spent creating those partnerships versus the number of people affected or potentially affected, it's a very good program. Um, it's still a challenge to get people to use the resource that we're making freely available. It's a challenge to get people to know about it, to realize that it's free, to realize the extent of the, of the resource available to them, uh, and that is something we're still figuring out in the mobile program. Uh, finally, I mentioned offline earlier. Our offline offering, which is still technologically imperfect, is not enough. The fact that we have free software and free content and it's freely available and it fits on a DVD or a USB stick is great, but the distribution is the key. How do we actually get 5,000 DVDs or USB keys to rural schools in South America or Africa or India? How do we actually deliver those things? And it's not as easy as sending them by post, even where the, the postal service could physically deliver the, the goods. It's when you, when you send something to a school or an institution, it is likely to go unused or forgotten about unless you deliver training with it, unless you actually meet people and explain and show and help them install it and, and encourage them to give them some ideas on how to use it in teaching, et cetera. And that is just a question of scale. How do you do that in scale? And, <clears throat> and this is a question we are yet to solve, which is one reason we, the foundation, are not actually doing much uh, in offline, because we haven't figured out how to do this. Uh, presumably the key would be partnerships, would be to find a local partner that already has the network on the ground to deliver that kind of training, that kind of uh, logistics. Um, easier said than done, but that would probably be the way we would need to, to proceed there. Um, okay, so now what? So, like I said, we have moved away from the idea of having foundation contractors outside um, the United States uh, doing programmatic work. We do have a lot of engineers outside the United States. Um, and we have switched instead to only working with, with partners, with grantees, with affiliate organizations. Uh, and so, many of you know, the um, uh, previous Wikimedia Foundation India programs team was replaced by a grant to a reputable Indian nonprofit called the Center for Internet and Society, CIS, who have the expertise and the, and the knowledge and the, and the uh, connections to do the work better, we think, than we could. Uh, so they are now grantees of the foundation. They have received significant funding to allow them to carry on um, program work to promote the mission in India alongside and in collaboration with the community and the Wikimedia India chapter. Uh, it it uh, got off to a bit of a rough start, but I think things now are uh, significantly better. There is a, a modus vivendi and there is um, good progress being made there, I think. Uh, we are in the process of doing the same uh, in Brazil with our Brazil team, which will basically follow the same model and be transitioned to a Brazilian nonprofit, um, about which there will be some public communication soon. Um, another decision we've made is we are very cautious now about active investment where there is no active community as I've defined it in the big slide. So where there is no core of active, self-motivated editors, we are unlikely to invest. We're, we're unlikely to try and tackle that problem of bootstrapping a community. We think for now this is just too hard a problem to crack. Our hands are full with easier problems, so we will do that first, even while we continue to think and mull over how to create communities where those don't exist. 
but, and I'm saying caution about active investment, I'm leaving the door slightly ajar. Uh, we are still listening, we are still open to community initiative, and the, the, the bright idea about how to bootstrap communities may well come from a community suggestion. So I'm happy to talk to absolutely anyone about absolutely any kind of project or work in the Global South. For our part, for now, we are stepping away from the idea of trying to spark communities where those don't exist. Our conclusion, and this follows, uh, is that growth happens when the community and outside resources, whether of funding or of just attention by external bodies and human resources, of course, come together. So we have seen failure or or, or, or lack of impact uh, when, when these two factors were not operating together, and we have seen success when they were operating together. It may seem a very easy conclusion in retrospect, but the fact is uh, the foundation and other groups have tried um, using only one and not the other. Um, <clears throat> so, more concretely, we are now focusing on a set of countries, regions, which we selected after some thought on the basis of the size of the population, the level of internet penetration, the size of the active editing community, the language status, um, and some kind of vague metric I called our ability to influence. Um, so, for example, our ability to influence things in Russia is low for all kinds of objective reasons. It's difficult for us to do things in Russia or Belarus um, and, and in some other regions for whatever reasons that we won't go into unless you really want to know and ask me later. Uh, some regions are harder for us to help or operate in than others. So that fed into our decision, that is one reason China, for example, the mainland is not on our list. So these are high potential communities in our mind uh, that can benefit from the external resources, the attention of the foundation, funding from the foundation, etc. cetera. Um, this, this new focus is a mixed one. It, I'll, I'll show you the list in just a second. It, some, some are countries that have chapters, some don't, some have a very active community, some have a smaller community, some are sharing a language with other countries, some are not. Uh, so we hope to learn a lot from, from these various uh, um, combinations, even as we, we focus on all of these regions, we hope to learn a lot about these differences. So here are the focus areas. This is also mentioned in the annual plan, so those of you who have read this would not be surprised. We are, of course, still focused on India and Brazil as hugely impactful and uh, uh, high potential regions. Uh, the Philippines, Argentina and Mexico, Indonesia, Turkey, Egypt, and Vietnam. These last four have question marks after them. Um, because our, um, our ability to influence or our, um, um, the, the level of, of understanding of the community we have or the depth of our connections with the community in those communities is not yet deep enough for us to be sure we can actually do significant work there, but we would like to. So we, I am actively in conversation with these communities and I am exploring the possibility of working uh, more, more um, intensively in those regions. Whereas, for example, in Argentina or Mexico, we know um, the chapter very well, we know the community fairly well and are confident in our ability uh, to, to do work there. Uh, so that's the reason for the question marks. I do hope I can remove those question marks very soon. These are conversations that are happening uh, these days. 
So what would that look like? Um, in India, we are basically um, monitoring the progress of our two major grantees, CIS and Wikimedia India, and we're interested in playing a supporting role, not a proactive role um, in India. Uh, we think both are doing a good job. We are generally pleased with progress made in the past year, year and a half. Um, and uh, again, some, some public communication about this will be forthcoming in the next uh, week or so. Uh, in Brazil, we are transitioning the team to a nonprofit called Asao Educativa. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, w and we would also be looking to support the community created uh, proto chapter group, uh, the association named after uh, Pietro Roveri, a departed uh, Wikimedian. Some of us have had the privilege of knowing. Um, it's not a chapter yet. Um, but we are looking to, to support that community group, again, in parallel with the um, established nonprofit that we would be funding. In Mexico, we are working with Wikimedia Mexico, uh, focusing on educational partnerships. We want to help them build capacity on the road to hiring staff. Uh, with, in, with Wikimedia Argentina, we are looking to help them with uh, extending their capacity around communications, um, that is media, and um, helping them in capacity building around partnerships, around negotiating partnerships in particular, and supporting their work in creating a strategic plan for Wikimedia Argentina. This has been discussed recently with Wikimedia Argentina. Um, in Turkey, uh, Turkey is interesting. I, I guess most of you don't know much about the Turkish community, but the Turkish community is a very active one. It's a fairly large Wikipedia, fairly mature. Um, let me throw up uh, some stats here real quick. Uh, yes, so about 200,000 articles about 470 active editors, about 60 very active editors. Those are the people who edit at least 100 times a month. Uh, a very active community, a large country, a strong language, um, an interesting possibility, and yet they don't have a chapter, they don't have uh, even a proto-chapter. Uh, the community is yet to sort of be organized and do off-wiki work. We think that's a very high potential area. Unfortunately, uh, from our perspective, there has been um, some political unrest in Turkey that has um, put, a, put, put this in a, on a question mark for us, whether or not we, we can work, whether or not the community sort of has the presence of mind to uh, think long term with us, but we would really like to. We see a lot of opportunity with the education program in Turkey. They have a very, very uh, active and growing higher education sector. Uh, that we're hoping um, would be open to the education program. In the Philippines, we're working with Wikimedia Philippines um, and, and strategizing with the community. Uh, in the Philippines, we have a, an interesting situation, a large community of active editors uh, that is shy, um, that is not really part of the chapter. So the chapter has several very active editors, but also has a lot of members who are not active editors, and a lot of the very active editors from the Philippines are not really active in the chapter, and so there's a question there of how to organize those active editors, not necessarily as chapter members, but how to get them more involved in off-wiki work. Um, in Egypt, um, we want to connect with several global initiatives around the Arabic language. Egypt is sort of a cultural center for the Arabic-speaking world, and there are several uh, foundations and large funders doing work um, around Arabic language uh, teaching, around improving the quality of teachers in the Arabic world, 
So a very strong focus on education in Arabic that we are hoping to uh, collaborate with and find ways to, um, to mutually uh, benefit each other. Uh, we're looking to maybe find a way to deploy offline Wikipedia in the Arabic-speaking world. And we're working with the community. Uh, Egypt, for example, is a country where we feel we have a high ability to influence. The community is very welcoming, is very happy to, have, to be helped by the foundation. And so we feel that is a good spot to um, work with. Um, again, uh, current events uh, got in the way a little. Uh, situation in Egypt is still fairly unstable. We're not sure how quickly we can proceed, but it's, it's still very much on the agenda uh, to work w sort of laterally on Arabic, but centered um, on the ground, centered in Egypt. Uh, we have, some of you already know this, we have a very successful education program running in several Egyptian universities and also in other universities around the Arabic-speaking world, Saudi Arabia, Algeria, um, Jordan. So we're hoping to capitalize on that energy. In Indonesia, we hope to be working with Wikimedia Indonesia uh, and to strategize with the community about how to invest more in Indonesia. Uh, we will also want to learn from and build on Wikimedia Indonesia's impressive existing initiatives. Uh, some time ago, uh, our colleague Siska uh, shared a report, an interesting report about the Javanese language rejuvenation project that Wikimedia Indonesia has carried out. I encourage you all to read that report. I think it's very interesting. Um, in Vietnam, again, a, 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 a Wikipedia with a very large editor base and no uh, community organization. Let me show you a snapshot here. So um, 800,000 articles, yes, many were created by bots, but a very, act, uh, a very large editing community, 325 active editors, 52 very active editors, of course, a very large country, a lot of native speakers. Um, so we hope to find a way to work with the community uh, and see how we can invest more in the Vietnamese Wikipedia. Uh, again, er, that is definitely a community that we have not had much contact with, that has not uh, sent delegates to uh, Wikimania very often, um, but we look forward to opportunities to, to connect. Uh, we may want to focus on image acquisition in Vietnam for uh, political reasons. Uh, it may be difficult to be seen to be organizing um, um, activities around writing content. It may be easier in Vietnam to focus on images at first, but these are very initial thoughts. That conversation is going on. Uh, as we speak, well, not as we speak, but these days. Um, that's it for me. I did deliberately want to leave time for questions instead of provide details I'm not sure you're interested in, so I'm happy to take questions. We have, what time is it? We have uh, 10 minutes for questions, and I am yours. We walk together for lunch, and we can discuss this um, till kingdom come. So, questions? Do we have, can we, can we have anyone else in the back who wants to use the mic? We have another one. Questions? Uh, good afternoon, my name is Dumisani. I'm from Wikimedia South Africa. And I'm going to ask an unfair question to Asaf. The, the strategy seems to suggest that the Wikimedia Foundation is sort of abandoning Africa. Is that what's happening here? No. Um, what is happening is that, uh, as you noticed, uh, sub-Saharan Africa is not included in the list that I just described. Egypt is in Africa. Um, but um, 
The reason is, as, as I implied in, in when I described how we came up with this list, uh, the main reason is the size of editing communities. We, we find it very, very difficult to justify the investment of time and money uh, without the existence of a strong, uh, even if small, uh, a strong self-motivated editing community. Now, Wikimedia, uh, uh, in South Africa, we have the largest editing community in sub-Saharan Africa, um, but it's still fa a fairly small one. As you know, we have been supporting Wikimedia South Africa on a number of initiatives via grants. Uh, I think we have a good uh, working relationship and will continue to, by the way, uh, let me make it clear. These are focus areas. These are these are regions where I will be proactively trying to make things happen, talking to communities, creating opportunities. We remain uh, um, serving the movement in all the ways we always have been. The grants program still serves the entire world, including South Africa, including countries that have never asked for a grant before, will continue to be able to ask for funding. Right? So the reactive elements of the foundation are still all in place. Nothing I've said here implies we will say no to initiatives outside these focus areas. So just to be very, very, very clear. So to your implied question, we will continue to support efforts in South Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa in general in proportion to um, the, the impact we perceive it as likely to, to produce. Over there, Peter. And if you can pass the mic to someone who wants to, okay. Yes, sure. Uh, thank you very much, Peter from Namibia, uh, one of the countries that doesn't have a strong editor community. But I wonder, um, I've been traveling around quite a bit, and I wonder how do you determine the size of the editor community in countries that have official languages that are not native? So I do know for a fact that Mauritius has a lively uh, community. I believe they have no chapter. Uh, I do for a fact that there's, there's Kenyans editing uh, at least on a scale, as you, uh, as you pointed out, for, for those sample countries. So, so they, I, I would guess they have way more than, than 300 active editors. But of course, they are editing the English Wikipedia. So what do you do? Do you check user, uh, everybody? Or how do you determine whether no, no. a certain editor comes from, comes from yeah, so Kenya? A, so a, a, just another comment, if I may. I might not get the mic again. Uh, before we get an editor community, we need to have a reader's community. I invite you to talk to me how to deploy offline Wikipedia to every school, to every library, to every community center. But in Namibia particularly, which is very sparsely populated and will never be a large community, uh, we haven't got a reading community. And that's why we haven't got writers. It's my personal fringe opinion, Peter. Thank, Thank you. you. I would love to discuss that with you. To your technical question, um, we have a means of uh, identifying editors by geography in an anonymized way um, at the foundation. It's, it's really wonky and it's, it's sort of put together with rubber strings, so it's not available to the community in general, but we're working on making it properly uh, robust so that you can uh, find it. But if you have seen these graphs in our monthly reports, so this graph is generated by that um, uh, mechanism. It basically anonymizes the data, but, but does a, a GOIP matching and so we know how many editors are uh, in each country. The, the, the stats pages I was showing are public. You probably know them. They're from stats.wikimedia.org. But they give you the editors per language rather than per country per language. Yes, other questions? Uh, Abbas. Um, can you hear me? Yes. OK. Um, do you think it's good leadership for the Wikimedia Foundation to drop everything that's hard for them? and do the easy stuff only? Yes, I do. I think it's the reasonable thing to do until we figure out how to do the hard things. We're not done. Like I said, we're only 7% down the road to our vision. 
I do think we need to focus on things we can achieve, on things we think we know how to do, and progress down the line, I hope, in a year, in two years, to harder things when we're all wiser. Yes. And uh, to follow up on uh, his question, um, I think that we also need to figure out how to increase the um, users of Wikipedia before, um, before concentrating on uh, the editors. So I agree. That's, th that's one of our five strategic goals. Absolutely. Yes. Reach. Yes. Yes. So um, when you say that one of the factors on, uh, I think one of the slides you mentioned, that you have to have a core community of editors, what if the, there are no users in the first place? So what yeah. do you do? So that's what Peter said. Yes, I agree. A, a core community of readers absolutely precedes a core community of editors. I agree. Next. Uh, I you. Yes, Charles from the Switzerland, again, again about Africa. I want to thank you to not focus on Africa. Uh, you make choices that are reasonable, and uh, just want to know if uh, Switzerland, France, other chapter want to make big focus on Africa. Do the foundation will support? No, it's not. We ask us about how are projects in Africa, you know what we do, and uh, if you don't focus on Africa, what do you think about our focus on Africa? Um, I'm happy to discuss your projects in some more detail. Um, I do support all mission-aligned work. I feel sometimes I am on the uh, hard line edge of the scale in terms of what to fund and in terms of experimentation. Uh, or at least I'm certainly perceived that way. So I think some of the programs you do, I would not have done. But I, I think it's perfectly legitimate for Wikimedia France, Wikimedia CH to, to have their own um, view. I, of course, encourage you to make the same kinds of considerations I make, even if you reach different conclusions. But yes, uh, I, I do not say that uh, um, because of my decision to not include uh, Sub-Saharan Africa in the focus areas, you should not either. Yeah. Uh, could someone give the mic to Heather? And anyone else wants to ask a question? Any other questions to get the mic? No? Okay. Thank you, oh. Asaf. I, um, I know how hard your job is, so I really appreciate you sharing those really interesting insights. Um, so I agree with most of what you said. I think one of the things that is missing to me, um, and I would urge the foundation to think about this a little bit, is um, research. So one of the things we, we are really bad at right now as a movement is trying to understand metrics and trying to understand how we evaluate whether a country, for example, or a region is good to go in. And we've heard a lot about that. We just don't have the right metrics. Um, and at the moment, research at the foundation is really divided. There isn't really a research arm for the, for the work that you guys do. And I think this is, could be a really great role for the foundation um, in terms of the work that you do um, to, to actually invest a bit more in research. There's, one, there's only one paper that I actually know of. There's another one coming out um, about looking at different countries and seeing what kinds of infrastructural support is necessary in order to see a community grow, a Wikipedia editor community grow. Um, that happened like 10 years ago. There's one other report coming out from Oxford um, in the next few months, but um, there's nothing else and we really need more. So, uh, you know, it's a completely different type of thing, but I, I think I'm really passionate about that. Yes, I absolutely agree. Uh, it's, it's been a pain point uh, for us internally at the foundation. We have struggled. I can tell you, I didn't come here to whine, so I didn't mention it before, but I can tell you we have been struggling to get the metrics that we need internally at the foundation for reasons that are too boring to go into. But this is changing. This is improving. We should be able to get much better metrics uh, technically. And I agree with you that we also need to be to get more involved with the existing and very lively research community around Wikipedia, which we have not been so far uh, from the grant-making Global South side of the organization, um, uh, to, to foster and, and maybe even commission some, some uh, pertinent research. I absolutely agree. Yes? I wanted to ask about... Could, could you introduce yourself? Yes. Uh, 
My name is Aya Mahfouz. I'm sorry, I have a mic. She has a mic, yeah. Oh, my name is Aya Mahfouz, and I'm a campus ambassador in the Egyptian Education Program. I wanted to ask, do you think that the only factor to consider is having editors? Don't you think, for example, that you would need, for example, some tech savvy volunteers for the Media Wiki? We suffer from many problems in the RTL support, and most of these problems, if they are, let's say, eliminated, they will help attract many people. Like, I don't think only attracting editors is a factor that you should consider. Yeah, that's a very good point. Uh, certainly technical volunteers, media wiki people are, are very important for a community. I see a marked difference between communities that include a few media wiki technical people and communities that do not have access to local people who, who know the technology. I think that's very relevant. The, the painful fact is, uh, again, that we don't actually have a good way of, of figuring out where MediaWiki developers are or aren't, right? I do have these nice uh, graphs for active editors, so that's something that I can easily determine about Egypt or Jordan or Nigeria. Uh, it's very hard for me to, to find out where MediaWiki developers are generally, but I, I take your point. I think it is important to also um, uh, look at some of the other support factors. And of course, editors are not everything. Off Wiki works requires event organizers, requires people with good social skills, requires people who can meet, go and meet a university rector, but all of these things are come after. You first need a core of editors before you need to send someone to talk to a university rector. Other comments, questions? Barabile. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Warabile Modongo. I'm from Botswana. Uh, I just wanted to pass a question back to you. Uh, I want to understand, or oh, I'm quite aware that one of the global strategies that you're, yeah, the key global strategies that you're basically looking at is to increase participation. But my point basically was, what is it that the Wikimedia Foundation is doing to the upcoming uh, uh, user groups or maybe uh, communities that are planning to, 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 to develop their own chapters. Uh, what are, what are the, the, the courage or the activation do you provide to upcoming or growing community groups that are too small? Because I want to believe those were the most targeted or those were the most people to be targeted to improve active editing on Wikipedia. Yeah, thank you for this question. Um, so, like I said, we don't know how to move from no core active editors community to having a core. We don't have a clear method of doing that. And so, for example, I don't know how to create that core in Botswana. I don't know. If I did, maybe we would do something about it. Uh, what we do do is support initiatives from the community. So, for example, we received a request for support from Wikimedians in Ghana. Sandister is right over there. Say hi. And uh, they proposed a program of outreach in Ghana to recruit some editors. I don't know if it will work or not, but we were willing to experiment. We were willing to take a chance and give that funding to the Ghana group. You could ask for funding as well for some outreach programs and, and try, right? But we are not going to take the initiative. So if you or your colleagues in Botswana don't have the initiative or a plan, we, are, we also don't. Um, so, so, that's, so, so I'm, I'm pushing it back to you. If you have the initiative, if you talk to people and see what works and what doesn't for them in their countries and their regions, maybe you can think of what you would like to do uh, to try and create an editing community. And of course, the, 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 the even, even earlier goal is for you to make sure you edit regularly, you are engaged with the community uh, more than socially on Facebook. I mean, getting to know the processes, Bugzilla, the mailing lists, getting to really understand so that you personally are a better ambassador when you try and get other people to edit. All right, we probably need to get out of here, but 
we can just wait until they kick us out. You um, hi, Asaf. Um, I'm Eugene from Wikimedia Philippines, and I would like to think that it's a positive thing that the foundation has selected Philippines as one of the focus areas for development. Um, I'd like to note that one of the metrics that you said when you drew, uh, drew up the list was ability to influence. Does that mean that the, our chapter needs to follow what the foundation wants to do? No, no, that's, that's not it at all. I realize it sounds maybe a little authoritarian. Uh, that's not at all what we mean. Uh, what we mean by ability to influence is, do we have partners to work with at all? So some communities may be very isolated, may just not be interested in working with the foundation, okay? For whatever reason, right or wrong, right? They may just say, leave us to our work and we're not interested in your intervention or help or funds or anything. So that would be a low ability to influence, not because they refuse to do what we want, because they're just not interested in even having a conversation, right? So uh, in, in some other situations, uh, it may be uh, even down to personality, right? Some, some uh, groups, some leaders may have uh, ideas or strategies that vary so wildly from what we consider reasonable that we wouldn't be able to come to an agreement. Okay, so it's not about uh, uh, dominating Wikimedia Philippines, we, we're not interested in that. But, for example, to give a totally hypothetical example, suppose Wikimedia Philippines wants to do a project involving creating uh, ice palaces across the Philippines in which they will promote free knowledge. And it'll cost $5 million. Let's just say that's the plan that Wikimedia Philippines is really passionate about. That's a plan we cannot agree to, we cannot consider reasonable, and we would discuss this, we would have a disagreement, and if we cannot uh, uh, reach a compromise or convince each other, then we would not be able to work together, and that's okay. And Wikimedia Philippines will try to do its thing, and we will sit back and wait until Wikimedia Philippines has a more reasonable idea. So that's what we mean by ability to influence. It's basically the, the, the willingness to have a conversation with us and to find mutually acceptable things to do. And it, again, it's okay that some of the other things you do, we may, may not think are a very good idea. That's okay, we know that some of the things we do, some of you think are not a good idea. So the, the, the question is, is there some shared ground that we can work together on. All right. Hi, my name is Daniel Dietrich from the Open Knowledge Foundation. Where are you? I would like to suggest um, yes. that you should start looking into funding other projects that liberate knowledge and information beyond editing Wikipedia. There's so many local initiatives trying to open up data from governments or from GLAM institutions with hack days or other initiatives and I think I think it's time for Wikimedia to look in how they can support these kind of groups. I agree. Have you visited our grant-making booth? Uh, no. Uh, so we have a grant-making booth up there. I encourage you to pick up a postcard from the booth, or I could give you one with, with, which has links to all of our different grant programs, uh, some of which, most of which, are available to non-affiliated entities, that is to absolutely anyone except for a for-profit company. Uh, so, yes, such initiatives can and very rarely do apply for funding and we would consider them. So the answer is yes, the door is open. Please encourage people to apply. I have already met someone here uh, from the Public Domain Project that discussed funding with me. I will add one caveat. Um, our movement relies on volunteer labor in certain ways. So nobody gets paid for editing Wikipedia. Nobody gets paid for uploading pictures to commons. Nobody gets paid for proofreading pages on, on Wikisource. Okay, these are, this is a strong and shared community norm. A lot of other things can be paid work. A lot of other things can be compensated. Uh, but that is a line that we would need to, uh, to negotiate with other uh, public domain, open content, open data projects if they're looking for funding to pay someone to do so to, for the actual work that they would do is 
too similar to the kind of work that we expect people to do as volunteers, we would not be comfortable funding it. And many other foundations would have no problem, right? And that's okay. There's nothing unethical about it, but there is something that is against our norms. Okay, so that may be one point where we may need to negotiate what is it exactly that we're funding, right? If, if one of those projects wants us to fund someone's time for proofreading texts, we're not going to do that. I agree. Yeah. I, I just um, fund by practice. It is hard to get funding from Wikimedia, for example, Wikimedia Germany. Mm -hmm. um, I actually applied two or three projects to them, and they, they love the project, but for some reason of their, you know, their their funding schemes, they simply couldn't do it. And okay. my impression was I, that this I, might be the case in other countries as well. Well, try us. I can't promise anything, but the Thank you. generally, yes, these are fundable projects. Again, we, we may disagree about impact, but it's certainly worth talking about. All right. Thank you very much for coming. I remain at your service.